Hi, it's Molly from Elvin Elysium, and I'm here to answer a couple of questions that I've had from my newsletter subscribers on what a good basic tool set for a polymer clay sculptor really is. And that's going to be somewhat determined by the individual needs of the sculptor. But I'm first going to go over kind of the basic toolkit that I have that allows me to create probably 95% of what you'll see me make. And the first tool that I'll talk about is probably the most important tool. This one I jokingly refer to as my magic wand. This little sculpture house, it's the brand, um, I think it's number 264, hardwood paddle tool, is the tool that I do the majority of my sculpting with. It's nice little hard edge here, it lets me put in a little detail. It's got a little flat edge on it here that I can make some cuts into the clay. But the most important feature of it is it's very smooth because it's a very hard wood and it's got this nice bowl shape here on the bottom. I hope you can kind of see that. And those two things combined, the bowl shape and the smoothness of this very hard wood, allow me to do what you're going to be doing a lot of as a sculptor. I can just blend one piece of clay into another one very simply and very seamlessly. And you can see I don't even really have to do too much smoothing with my finger to make that applique blend. Now this, I'm going to provide a link at the bottom of this video where you can get this exact tool. It comes in a set of four from Sculpture House and it's a little on the pricey side. But I think you'll be really happy with it. What you find mostly in sculpting are these wooden sets. Like you can see this is a low Cornell brand. And this is the paddle tool that comes in that set. And you can see it looks more or less the same in shape, this nice bold shape, as my paddle tool. And I don't know if you can see how shiny this is, but this is one that I've actually done a little fix on by dipping it in some resin. I'll show you how to do that on another video. But this is one of the other tools in the set. It has a bowl shape on it too. And let's just see why you might want to avoid buying this set. As I start to try to blend with this, it's already kind of dragging in the clay. And see down here how it's like kind of torn? I don't know if you can see that pretty well. It's not blending smooth at all. And that's because this is a much cheaper and much more porous wood. Um, the nice thing about the set is it does come with a lot of different cutting edges and edges available that you can do some more shapes in. And for that reason, I'd probably pick it up. It's $7 and the set comes with some other tools like this little wire tool. Um, I think there's like 15 tools in the set. Um, but you can also see it's like ripped up some of the clay on here. So if you're going to use this kind of cheap, softer wood set that you can get, um, put a little bit of resin. This is actually UV resin on the tip of them. And this one is improved. It's not nearly as good as my hardwood tool, but you can see it kind of doing a, a respectable job at it. You'll struggle a lot less if you do a little fix on this tool. This is a hardwood tool that I found on eBay. And it's kind of got a paddle end, but not much of one. It's got this teardrop end, which is kind of okay. It's not as good at, um, Shaping and blending, it makes too deep of a channel in the clay for me. But um, this is a single tool, and I think it cost me about $12. It's not quite as hard of a, a wood as this uh, Sculpture House tool really is. So if you're going to invest in a tool, this is really the one. So the other kind of basic tools in the toolkit that I use is this. It's by Kemper Tools, and you can see I've used it quite a lot. It is a needle tool. On the end of here is a very, very, very sharp and pointy needle. So what you're going to do with this is you can do these little, um, kind of making hair in this one, you can do these little tiny details in it. You can also draw on it, like if you wanted to cut this with an X-Acto. So they're kind of a nice multi-purpose tool and I use it a lot in texturing. So that is a must-have for me. And then these little things. Um, I call them a ball stylus tool. That's kind of what I learned. They're also um, called an embossing tool. You can see there's like a little ball on the end and there's um, different shapes of them. When I teach people to do some of these little um, shapes, like a little circle, 
you can blend that into a little scale just with a sweep of these little tools. And depending on the size, you can really get a lot of textural effects and making those little blended scales in different sizes. So I probably have six or seven different sizes of those from the paper crafting section. Another must have is this handy dandy X-Acto knife because you're gonna be sometimes cutting little bits out of the clay that you're using. So these are really indispensable and, and they're pretty, pretty cheap. Another lovely tool that I use is, um, this is actually a cheese cutter, but now they sell them for more money as a clay scraper. Um, I don't remember where I got these. I think I got like five or six of them for a couple bucks. But when we do a little detail against these ceramic tiles, these allow you to slide under and just get these right up off of the, the, the tile. You can also use them just to cut. And you can insert your own who cut the cheese jokes here. I know I tell enough of those when I'm sculpting. So you can use this for kind of a lot of different um, tasks as well. But the most important is all those little fine details you sculpt against this um, smooth ceramic tile. You can just lift them right up. So this tile is another um, kind of key thing. It's just, I think, a five inch by five inch square glaze. You don't want an unglazed one. Um, ceramic tile because it gives you, you'll note as I, if I want to pick this up and work on it, it, nothing falls off, but I have a firm backing to work against. So I, I highly suggest that for anything that you're doing that you're sculpting a little detail, or even if like sometimes when I'm working on a dragon, I'll actually be sculpting the whole thing against this tile. It keeps my hands off my clay and gives me um, a nice surface to, to press in against and work against. The other fun thing about getting a single ceramic tile is walking into the Home Depot and asking the guy for a single ceramic tile. They give you a lot of really interesting looks when you do that. <laughs> so um, let me get some of this smoothed out. So I do a lot of mermaids. And this is uh, from AMC Creatures. I think it's a tool that um, this guy had made. And it's you can see it's got this little curved um, cutting edge out of it. And what it is, is if you're going to make dragon scales or mermaid scales, you put it against the clay and you kind of press in and press in and press in. And you can see I've made a, a kind of a nice and convincing little dragon scale that way. These are, um, I think, about 10 bucks. These come in sometimes those clay sets that you buy, and it's basically just a tube with a cut in it that does more or less the same thing if you get deep enough with it. And you can find smaller ones. Move that out of the way. You can find smaller ones that are also just an angle cut tube. This is actually the one for like a, a seven or six inch doll. If I'm making mermaid scales, this is the exact tool that I use to make those scales. And I'll just sit there for a good 20, 30 minutes very meditatively pressing scales into the piece. So if you're going to do any dragons or mermaids, getting a, a scale maker is, isn't a bad idea. But your cheap tool set actually comes with a respectable scale maker. These little wire ribbon making tools, so called because they cut ribbons out of the clay if you drag them. Oops, my applique came up. But they also, if you just keep them at a 45 degree angle and cut and pull up, do make respectable scales. So these are part of that big set that you can find at most Michael's craft stores. Another fun little tool, actually, you can get in the dental aisle. This is a nice little rubber-tipped dental tool. And I use it in fairy dolls for um, making fine lines that I don't want to make a deeper gouge in like you would with a needle tool. And it um, is how I, I get the uh, eyelids kind of made up under the eye when I put it at like a like an inset eye in there. It's not a must have, but it's something that I use quite a lot. This is an acrylic clay roller. And if you don't have a pasta machine, these work just exactly like a rolling pin. You can see now I've um, rolled this nice thin sheet of clay with that. And you can do things like stacking playing cards on either side to keep it at uh, a certain thickness when you're rolling it. These are pretty cheap, five, six bucks. I use an assortment of paintbrushes. When I have a little detail in there or some fingerprints or tool marks, I'll go back over them and smooth them out 
with watercolor and acrylic brushes. There's sometimes when I'm doing like a, a face, you can see it's kind of taking out those little tool marks I made. When I'm doing a face or trying to smooth clay in the eyes of a, an art doll, I'll do a lot of my sculpting actually with various paint brushes. It, um, if you're working on a really subtle area like a nose or like I said, an eyelid, uh, some of these hardwood tools and stuff are a little hard to control. So shaping with the paintbrush is not really a bad idea. This set I bought a while ago and I think I've used them exactly once. These are various, uh, you can see they're rubbery. They're various little rubber tools and I find that they're a little too rubbery to work with polymer clay, but you can kind of make as I'm kind of monkeying around with them a little bit, some interesting textures and shapes in there. Uh, it come, they come in some different sizes. This is a smaller one. This is what I actually use when I do inset eyes into a piece where I have like a glass eye or a card cured eye. I use the end of this to gently press the eye into the socket so it's not, it kind of sticks to the eye and it doesn't slip around like trying to press it in with a paddle tool um, would because the hardwood will slip around in the eye and you'll make a, a big fat mess. Um, so I hope that helps you to kind of think about what sort of tools that she would like. Um, everything except for this little paddle tool thing is easily available in any art supply or any big box craft store. And if you want this set, I'm including the link at the bottom. Sometimes you can find a single one on eBay, but it does end up being more like this hardwood tool. So thanks for watching and feel free to sign up for my mailing list if you'd like more tips and tricks or you want to ask me a question, just leave a comment or contact me. Thanks and happy sculpting.